to day with me. Christmas special. Hey guys, welcome to Up to Date with Nate. This is my second try at this. I recorded about six minutes of footage already and I found out that my camera wasn't recording, so that's good. I hope you enjoyed my singing Christmas tie. I did not know that the batteries were out until I just now tried it, uh, but I hope you enjoyed that. Don't worry though, there'll be more Christmas music to come in this special Christmas episode of Up to Date with Nate, so be sure to stick around and uh, enjoy Christmas with us. Alright, so it is the week before Christmas, and as far as I know, Danielle and I are totally done Christmas shopping, at least for now. We've said it about three times that we're all done buying presents. Um, as far as I know, last night we got the very last gift, and it still needs wrapped, but other than that, we should be done and good to go. Danielle is finishing her last three days of school with her students, uh, but she does have early release on Thursday and Friday, so that is a good thing. Um, the students are pretty crazy in the week leading up to Christmas break, but we're just trying to make it through to Christmas to spend time with family, and we are really looking forward to that. Next up, I wanted to give you guys an update on the Amiibo tournament that we held with my Super Smash Bros. friends last Thursday. So as you know, I trained Samus, and the evening of the tournament, right before we left to go to it, I did a little more training with Samus, but I think I might have hindered her training a little bit. Whereas before I had had her uh, be pretty aggressive, that last evening of training she started being flighty and dodgy. So I may have overtrained her or something, but if I ever retrain her, hopefully she'll get a little better. But in any case, uh, we did three tournaments with our Amiibo. The first was an eight-player Smash tournament, which was the first to win two matches, and we put eight Amiibo in there, and they all battled. Samus won the very first match, and so I had high hopes, but she didn't end up winning. Isabel, who was trained by Skylar, actually ended up winning, so congratulations to Skylar on that. The next tournament we did was a one-on-one -on -one tournament with randomized stages. Generally, in tournaments, people don't want to do randomized stages because you're not sure what you're going to get, and some stages are more likely to kill you than others. But we did it anyway, and the winner of that tournament was Reagan's Pikachu. Then the last thing we did was a Battlefield tournament, which is the stage with three platforms, and it's just the standard stage for Smash Bros that everyone likes to fight on. The winner of that tournament ended up being Olimar. And Olimar might have had a better chance against Pikachu in the previous tournament, but Olimar fought my Samus right before, and the amiibo keep learning even when they're fighting each other. So I think Olimar actually picked up some bad habits from Samus and took them over into his next match with Pikachu. So that was kind of unfortunate for Olimar, but he did end up winning the final tournament, so that was good. So congratulations to Jen and Reagan for winning those, and hopefully we can do it again sometime. I really enjoyed it. Uh, last weekend, I had two choir concerts with Eagle Song. Friday night, we had our Watch Night Christmas concert, which was a family and friends Christmas concert with a special set of music. And Watch Night is designed to kind of look toward the coming of Christ, and it's got uh, pretty soft, pretty quiet music, but um, it's really beautiful stuff. So we got to sing that on Friday. And then again, we did the same set of music on Sunday for an old folks home that Eagle Song gets to sing for every month or two. So uh, we did the same set again. Um, honestly, we did a little better because we had more experience with the music at the retirement concert, but both were excellent concerts, beautiful music, and uh, we're looking forward to doing one more Christmas concert on January 6th for Advent with Eagle Song. So that brings us up to date for this week, I think. 
But for the Christmas special, I wanted to do something a little different, so I got to thinking uh, about a couple factoids I could give you guys. The first question I had was, what is the first Christmas special that aired in the United States? Good question, right? So I found a few things, as a good millennial does, on Wikipedia, and this is U.S. Christmas specials. So the first one is Bedtime for Sniffles, which was a Looney Tune, and apparently that first aired in 1940. Now I've never seen that one, uh, but I may look it up on YouTube later after we're done recording today. But that was 1940 was the first Christmas special as far as uh, television broadcasting. Next wasn't actually until 10 years later, and some of you might be able to guess this one. In 1950, Babes in Toyland first aired. Um, I don't know much about Babes in Toyland. I've actually never seen it as far as I know. So if I should see it, definitely leave a comment below so that I can uh, go ahead and watch that one as well. Am I missing out by not seeing it? You tell me. Uh, the next two are classics that I wanted to go ahead and include. The first Rankin Bass Christmas special, which is all the claymation and animation Christmas specials that you look forward to every year, was Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, which premiered in 1964. And then finally, the Charlie Brown Christmas special first premiered in 1965, and I want to say it's been airing every year since then. So that's a few facts about Christmas specials and television. Another factoid I wanted to look up is as I was driving home this morning, the song It's Beginning to Look a Lot Like Christmas was playing. And there's one line in there. Well, what got me thinking about it was that we don't update Christmas music to our current times. So in that song, it says, a pair of hop-along boots and a pistol that shoots is the wrist that is the wish of Barney and Ben. And I don't know what hop-along boots were. I assumed maybe like boots with springs on them or something. And I was thinking if you were to update that song, maybe you'd put like uh, Heelys in there or um, Nikes that glow or something. I really don't know. But I didn't know what hop-along boots were, so I went ahead and wikipedia that as well. And it turns out that hop-along boots actually come from a Western character named Hop-along Cassidy, who first appeared in Clarence E. Mulford's book in 1904. So Hop-along Cassidy was a Western guy, and apparently he had a wooden leg which got him his nickname because he'd kind of have to hop along in order to get around. And so there were a lot of television specials that were developed for Hop Along Cassidy. And the song, It's Beginning to Look a Lot Like Christmas, wasn't written until 1951. So that was kind of a cool thing that I found out. Hop Along boots are actually cowboy boots, but specifically for Hop Along Cassidy. I just thought it was interesting that that character had survived from 1904 all the way to 1951 to be included in a song. So that was a cool thing that I found out, and I hope you enjoyed that as well. As you know, all good Christmas specials include special songs. So I wanted to include a couple of those for you in this episode of Up to Date with Nate. Here is O Holy Night. Yeah. 
comes a new and glorious morn. Fall on your knees, oh, hear the angel voices, oh, For the any music update, I wanted to let you guys know a little bit what's going on. Uh, just right now, we're preparing for the new year. Um, as you know, I announced the Nate Engberg Music Choral Club a couple weeks ago, so kind of thinking towards that, and that's going to be launching in the first quarter of 2019, hopefully on the earlier end of that. But if you haven't invited your church's choir director to join the Nate Engberg Music Choral Club, uh, please send them my way. As you know, I'm giving away 20 copies of the Choral Club for free to church choir directors and Christian University choir directors or other choir directors who are interested in the music. So again, if you know any choir directors who might be interested in a free preview of my music, please let them know about that. I plan on releasing an Indiegogo update to my backers this afternoon after we're done recording and getting this video up. So. If you're an Indiegogo backer, please look for that and we'll get that out to you. Lastly, we're hoping to do one final recording session for the year with Eric and Eddie. I te just texted them this morning and we should be able to get in the studio tomorrow night to do a little more recording. And backers, uh, I'll explain a little bit more about that in my email to you. But if you would like to become a backer of the Steadfast Album Project, it's not too late to do so. Just email me to ask for information on how to reserve your copy of the album, and I'll get right back to you. Next up is another special music. This is Joy to the World. Let earth receive her King 
nature sing, and heaven and nature sing, and heaven and heaven and nature sing. Joy to the earth, the Savior reigns. Let men their songs employ, while fields and floods, rocks, hills, and plains repeat the sounding joy. Repeat the sounding joy. Repeat, repeat the sounding joy. No more let sin and sorrows grow, nor thorns invest the ground. He comes to make all blessings flow, far as a curse is found. Far as the curse is found, far as, far as the curse is found. He rules the world with truth and grace, and makes the nations prove the glories of his righteousness and wonders of his love. And wonders of his love, and wonders, wonders of his love. Okay, for our question of the week, we got some answers. It's actually my mom, Kirsten, and Cassie who replied. First off, Kirsten said she likes nativity or the nativity story, I'm not sure exactly the name, but she likes that one for the feels and elf for the silliness. You may also notice a theme here. My mom answered and said uh, her favorites are elf, Santa Claus is coming to town, and the nativity story. Cassie said, of course elf is my favorite, end quote. And a close runner-up for her would be How the Grinch Stole Christmas, which I believe is the cartoon version. Danielle and I actually just watched the uh, Jim Carrey version last night, and it's still hilarious. So many memes are in that. Personally, I think Jim Carrey's How the Grinch Stole Christmas was living in 2017, when the rest of us were living in 2001, or whatever year the Grinch came out. Yes, I did take a break and put on a Santa hat. But I do have to say that the cartoon Christmas special of How the Grinch Stole Christmas is definitely the best one, in my opinion. So that is all the answers we got this week. And I wanted to ask you guys what your favorite Christmas treat is as the question of the week this week. Two of them that I thought of are one that my mom makes and one that my dad makes, actually. So our family has a little bit of Swedish blood in us. And a traditional Swedish Christmas treat is rosettes. And what they are is they're a deep fried cookie that um, is very thin and in the shape of like a star or something dainty. And you dip a mold in and then you dip the mold in the oil and it comes off and fries for a little bit. Then when you take them out, you put some powdered sugar on it and those are great. Those are one of my favorites because I remember making them when we were growing up and then chomping on them after we made them. Then another holiday special that my dad does every year is he usually makes a batch of fudge. And personally, I think his fudge is the best fudge out of all the fudges. Um, chocolate fudge, obviously, because in America, we only have chocolate fudge. Apparently in other countries, they have different flavors of fudge, which is weird. But... I digress. My dad's fudge is pretty good. Uh, so those are a couple of my favorite Christmas treats. Please leave a comment to answer that question with some of your favorite Christmas treats as well. Well, that will about wrap up our episode for today, but I wanted to give you guys one more reminder. It is Christmas time, and if you guys don't have a church to go to for a Christmas service, uh, be sure to get to one this Christmas. This Sunday is Christmas Sunday. Uh, my church is having an evening 
candlelight service at West Valley Baptist Church on the 23rd. And I'm sure you could also find uh, some watch night services on the 24th as well. So if you don't have a church to go to, just make sure you get to one this Christmas to appreciate the real reason for the season, which is Jesus Christ our Savior. I think that'll about do it for today's episode. Merry Christmas and stay steadfast.